Hey, you know, you okay? Sarah. Sarah, what's wrong? And once I put the ointment on him, he'll be good as new in no time. No, no, no. No, 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 she ain't. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't, don't, don't do nothing. Don't, don't. Please. Don't do nothing stupid. Please. Heal, no. Next time, his daddy should do the discipline, and I will sprain my wrist. <laughs> Watch it, boy. <laughs> Your wife will get yourself killed. Why? Why? Because this is God's country, that's why. We white folks, we made in his image. And in God's country, I can do Whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> It's about a resistance, about freedom, about fighting back. You have a man who, when we start off the story, he has an idea of what he thinks freedom is and how he aspires to give freedom to his family and his wife and his son. And things go tragically wrong for him very quickly in the story. And he's forced to go on this journey where I akin it to Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole and running into these very different characters and each character he runs into kind of gives him a philosophy of what they think freedom is and what slavery is and essentially our stories ask this very existential question of what is freedom and what is slavery and you know what are we slaves to you know physically and mentally and and how we can transcend our past to become new people we are constantly coming across decisions where we have to choose between what's good for us and what's good for humanity. How does it feel? What? Freedom. I still remember my first day. send you up to Canada. You will be safe there. Safe. What is more important, Frederick? Freedom for one man or freedom for all men? This man will never be a slave. 
and yet he's willing to risk his life and the life of his sons so we can be free. No, sir. I cannot sit idle while this man fight for me. We can't all fight this war with the pen, Mr. Douglas. Some of us best equipped to fight this war with the gun. I think I'll go with the old man. It's an honor. I do this for my son. The way this story evolved was that I was interested in telling a story about freedom and resistance and somebody fighting and succeeding. At the same time, I, I'm a storyteller. I love action movies. I like chase movies. I wanted to put in that context. Uh, I had a kind of personal policy that I wasn't going to do slave narrative films. You know, I didn't want really to keep digging into the same barrel of tales of, uh, of woe and despair and, and, and these kinds of things. But Emperor is a different take on it. And it's about somebody who fights back. And it's a true story about some men of color who joined in with John Brown and his sons to take Harper's Ferry. It was about showing the fight and the fight to survive and showing Shields as this superhero, that this was a chance of a lifetime for me to be a part of this story that I feel like will empower so many people at a time where we need it the most. This movie was so exciting. Uh, you could tell it was a different kind of story. We hadn't seen this movie. It was super entertaining. At the same time, it had real weight. It was saying powerful things. So you just go, well, I would like to see this movie. So if you want to see it as a viewer, then you want to make it as a filmmaker. For me, the story of Shields Green was particularly fascinating because he was very young. He was very smart, even though he was totally uneducated. He made it to freedom, and he met Frederick Douglass, he met John Brown, he met Levi Coffin, even Robert E. Lee. If you look at all these historical characters, which all of them are some of the most important characters in American Civil War, they all converged in one time. And then in addition to the fact that Shields was part of John Brown's posse, knowing he was gonna die, he still joined John Brown. To me, that's really what heroes are made of. And that story to me was very unique and I felt like it needs to be told. I very much wanted to balance out the arguments of Frederick Douglass, which were very well articulated in the script, and John Brown. So I went and got a number of quotes from John Brown and I saw where you could place them in the script so that you got a sense about how he felt about certain things, about his passion, something for me to be passionate about. And he says some really beautiful things, some very poetic things, some very uh, realistic and truthful things. I hate to disappoint you, Colonel, but you're not likely to get a peaceful anything from us. Not while that abomination called slavery is still the law of this land. Not when Negro blood flows in our rivers and irrigates our crops. Not till every last man, woman, and child is freed from their chains will we ever surrender. Frederick Douglass has always been a very fascinating person to me. He's a, a towering figure in American history, an extraordinarily complicated man. I've always wondered why there wasn't more information about him and why he wasn't represented dramatically more. So this is uh, a little bit of, of just do that's coming to an extraordinary man, an extraordinary group of, of people in the story. I thought this would be a great opportunity to use our own imagination and create a heroic ride, but stick to truth when it comes to his character and his major historical events. Frederick Douglass in his, in his uh, autobiography speaks about Shields Green as being a man of few words but of conviction and a man who knew 
who he was. And when he was in a room, his presence was very heavily felt. So many people, when they think about the subject of slavery, they go, well, you know, black people were enslaved. And they don't think about the lives of black people before slavery, what their lives were before that. They only think of them as victims. And Shildry is not a victim. This is about a guy who asserts himself and takes control of his life in a world where there's almost no choice for anyone. We're on his shoulder the whole movie. He ushers us through this landscape and through the people he interacts with. We get to make a decision along with him on what freedom is and what, what are you willing to pay for your freedom, you know? And what are you willing to sacrifice to unshackle yourself physically and mentally from slavery? The heart of our film, it's about understanding. It's about seeing someone who is not in your shoes and being able to acknowledge them for who they are, how they're different from you, and also how they're all the same. Regardless of what has happened to you in your life or where you come from, that you can win. These stories are so important to get told and, and, and told with integrity and told with hope. I think sometimes the best way to understand where we are now as a, as a people, as a nation, is to look in our past. And when I look at where we are right now, we're at a pivot point in America where we're really trying to understand what is freedom, how do we work together as a community. And this movie addresses all those things in a very inspirational way, I think. And at the same time, again, when I talk about it in those terms, it kind of sounds like hot liver oil, like, oh, you should see this movie, is good for you, which I never want to see a movie because it's good for me. I work all week. I want to have a good time when I go to the movies. And what's great about Emperor is that it's a good time. He really has a series of what I would call swashbuckling adventures, where he meets all these amazing characters. It has all this kind of adventure and action. So I think people are going to be surprised when they see the movie, because they're going to be like, oh, I didn't know I was going to have fun. This is, this is fun.